Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin and today I am going to talk to you about signs and symptoms of diabetes. You may have been just diagnosed with diabetes or you may have been struggling with diabetes for a while and you may still have signs and symptoms of diabetes. We are going to explain what those symptoms and signs can be and why you may be experiencing those symptoms. Tune in. All right, guys, so basically today we are going to talk about all the signs and symptoms in detail. But first, let's summarize what are those signs and symptoms could be. Excessive thirst and urination is very common. Excessive hunger, fatigue and tiredness, weight loss, nausea, dry mouth, itching, dizziness, frequent infections, decreased or blurry vision, dark velvety skin, numbness, tingling or pain in the feet, foot ulcers, erectile dysfunction, chest pain, slow healing sores and cuts, frequent yeast infections, dry mouth and itchy skin, urinary incontinence. So let's go over these symptoms one by one. Hopefully we will try to cover all of these, almost all of them. So basically you will have excessive thirst and urination because your kidneys can handle only so much blood sugar. So what happens physiologically, your kidneys will start excreting excessive blood sugar once you hit the blood sugar threshold of 180 and above. In diabetics, that can be a little bit higher, but typically in normal individuals, if your blood sugar goes about 180, your kidney will stop reabsorbing that. The job of the kidney is actually not letting blood sugar go down because actually food is valuable, right? So we do not want to, our body does not want to waste the sugar but it can only absorb so much and after a certain point it starts excreting that excessive blood sugar. At that point, blood sugar is an osmotic substance. What that means is it attracts water with it. So every time you excrete sugar in your urine, you will also excrete water with it and that's going to cause dehydration, that's going to cause excessive thirst, and this is going to be a vicious cycle. You're going to keep urinating because your blood sugars are remaining high, and you are going to continue to drink to compensate for the water loss, and since you're losing also sugar, you're going to continue, continue to eat and so forth. The problem is, in that situation, your body is really deprived of insulin. Not that you cannot make insulin, it's just that it's like a crisis situation where your body is really in need of something, some sort of intervention. This could be uh, dietary, but in patients who are having excessive uh, thirst and urination, they are typically insulin deficient, either temporary or permanently, so that will definitely need at least short-term help. Now, why excessive hunger happens? Again, Number one reason is because when you have uncontrolled diabetes or when you're just getting diagnosed with diabetes, you probably are running very high blood sugars. Now, these symptoms doesn't have to happen to everyone. So if you are getting screened for by your primary care doctor and they, they diagnose you with diabetes, you're in the early stages, these symptoms may not happen. So. Uh, these symptoms, as I said, typically happens if you our average blood sugars are running more than 200, which corresponds to around 8.5, um, 9 percent A1C or above, uh, and that's where you start getting excessive urination and excessive thirst. And you may actually um, start getting hungry just because you're excreting excessive sugar and that your body will give a signal that your blood sugars um, are being wasted, so you will end up getting hungry. Insulin resistance is uh, another problem that can uh, cause hunger, but that may or may not be uh, associated with your excessive uh, urination. So the third one is the fatigue. Now you will be fatigued because your blood sugar is high, but you're basically not 
able to use it. So think about this. You have $30 million that's inherited sitting in the bank, and you're making nothing. So that's what diabetes is. Your blood sugar is so high, but your tissues cannot really use that money. I mean, sugar, right? So you cannot use that sugar. So sugar is the primary energy source for all of our organs, right? So even if you don't eat any sugar, your body will make sugar because that's what you live on. That your body will convert fat into sugar, will turn protein into sugar, but you have to maintain a certain amount of blood sugar because that's what your primary energy source is. Now, of course, if you're eating excessive sugar, excessive carbohydrates, which leads to diabetes, is because that excessive sugar turns into fat, and the fat causes insulin resistance, and then insulin doesn't work anymore, and then your blood sugar goes high. That is a typical cycle. So um, just because you're eating carbohydrates doesn't mean that you're going to end up being diabetic. So as long as you're eating carbs, but you're burning it, and you're not turning into fat, that's not really going to cause diabetes. So there is a misconception out there as well saying that if you eat carbohydrates or any sugar in your life, you will end up being diabetic. That is not true. If you are very physically active, you actually will need, because your muscles primarily use uh, glucose and glycogen as a primary energy source, and that's how we become athletic. Uh, most athletic people actually eat a lot of carbohydrates to be able to keep up with their performance. Besides the point, you may become hungry if you're losing a lot of sugar. Another common problem is nausea, especially the morning nausea is common. Now, our body uh, tend to make a lot of blood sugar at night. Uh, th this is called a dawn phenomenon, especially after 4 or 5 o'clock. Some of the hormones kick in that opposes the action of insulin. So even normal individuals will uh, get up with a higher blood sugar than say, for example, um, you know, their 4 o'clock blood sugar will be lower than their 7 o'clock blood sugar. In diabetics, that's much more exaggerated uh, just because insulin uh, action is not there as much. So regardless of the fact that you're going to wake up with um, uh, a high blood sugar more than likely. Now, when that happens, hyperglycemia, which is high blood sugar, will actually slow down your stomach. So if your stomach is not really moving, that's going to back up. And uh, unfortunately, especially in type 2 diabetes, uh, patients tend to have abdominal obesity. And that also leads to reflux disease, acid reflux. So acid reflux can cause nausea by itself. But when it's backed by high blood sugars, that's just going to get exaggerated. And uh, if you have underlying gastric ulcer disease, peptic ulcer disease, etc., those are also become the contributing factors. Not everybody will have nausea, but as I said, if your blood sugars are high, it will lead to gastroparesis. Uh, when that becomes severe and a chronic condition, we call this uh, gastroparesis, and that's very common in type 1 and type 2 diabetics, more in type 1s. But the primary source for that problem that initiates the problem is high blood sugars, which slows down your stomach. So as a result, most of the people will wake up and they will not even be hungry. Uh, most type 2 diabetics actually will tell me that they don't even eat anything for breakfast or the entire day. But the, their problem is they end up eating very late uh, and they're physically inactive and that ends up turning to fat. So it's a vicious cycle that keeps going on. So um, that is the reason for nausea. Of course, dry mouth is another problem. So that's, as you can imagine, if you're losing a lot of water in the urine and if you don't have enough time to compensate for it, you may be working on the job uh, or you may have customers or you may have things to do uh, that you may not be able to keep up with uh, the, the water replacement. And as a result, you'll end up with a dry mouth. Itching is another common complaint that I hear from my patients. And there are multiple reasons for it. Of course, even the climate that you live in will determine if you're going to have a dry skin or not. But again, if you're dehydrated uh, from diabetes, that is definitely a risk factor for dry skin as well. Now, another common thing that uh, my patients um, uh, uh, always tell me when I question about their habits, uh, for example, actually, uh, 
taking a shower every day is a must. You should be taking a shower every day uh, or a bath. But um, when you are using soap, especially certain soaps, tend to dry your skin. So I tell my patients, do not use the soap heavily. Yes, you can use for the private parts and to keep it clean. But um, uh, using soap heavily uh, every day will definitely dry out your skin. And if you're not using um, creams and emollients, that can definitely dry your skin out uh, a lot more. And if you have diabetes that is uncontrolled, that can dehydrate you, and that will lead to dry skin, and then itchy skin will, uh, res uh, will become a result of that. Uh, some medications, uh, especially SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, induce itching. So I'm not sure if it is because of the drugs, uh, it's the drug itself, or is it because also they make people dehydrated? Again, remember that class: the Farsiga, Jardians, Invokana, Steglatro. These medications uh, actually uh, work by making you urinate excessive blood sugar. Uh, so you're going to be thinking, like, why would that be happening? Because that's supposedly supposedly that's that's not right. Um, but to be honest with you, you know, it's actually a good thing that's your body's defense mechanism to prevent excessive blood sugars. So if you wouldn't urinate the blood sugars, your blood sugar will end up in a thousand and then you will go into coma. So since we know how body defends itself, so uh, the drugs have been developed to uh, even below 180 threshold as we discussed. Uh, when you start taking those medications, you will be able to excrete more blood sugars because your kidney will not excrete blood sugars, especially when you have diabetes uh, below 200. So at that point, we still want you to excrete the blood sugars. But part of the problem with those medications, it can lead to or they can lead to um, uh, dehydration and itchy skin as well, just to keep in mind. Another problem is dizziness or orthostatic hypotension for example you may just get up from stand, sitting position to standing position or from lying down to sitting up position uh, these can lead to uh, dizziness and if you are having that problem that may be a sign of dehydration as well again uh, most of the symptoms boils down to dehydration so the bottom line is I'm not telling go drink more water we just need to make sure that we intervene and bring your blood sugar down immediately and then resume the homeostasis again. Uh, homeostasis means the, the, the balance of the body, the regular balance. Because when your blood sugar is on in the 300, 400 range, uh, that is typically unacceptable to your body and everything goes crazy. Uh, dehydration is inevitable. So you cannot just uh, have gallons of water you know, carrying around to prevent the dehydration. So the solution to that would be uh, bringing your blood sugar down uh, very fast. Now, another problem would be infections. So uh, you will hear from your friends or if you have experienced yourself, you may end up with urinary tract infections, skin infections, and so forth. Now, number one, when you have diabetes, excessive blood sugars will actually uh, disturb uh, your immune system and your white blood cells, your neutrophils will not be as effective to defend against the viruses and bacteria. So that's number one. Number two, uh, excessive blood sugars, of course, is the main uh, source for bacteria as well. Uh, so if you are urinating a lot of blood sugars and, and your urine is full of sugar, of course, that's going to attract fungus uh, and that's going to attract bacteria as well. As a result, uh, that's also a side effect of those medications we just discussed about uh, the Jardians, Invacana, Stegolatro, uh, etc. Those medications definitely uh, can increase the risk of infection. So if you're having a lot of infections already, and if your doctor talks about those medications, just tell them, hold on, uh, you know, I'm, I already have a lot of infections. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't need that. Uh, there are a lot of options. Again, you know, the best medicine is no medicine, but if you need a medicine, uh, your doctor should really know you very well and understand what's going on with you before prescribing any medications. Unfortunately, in today's world, uh, doctors rush things and uh, come up with conclusions very quickly. 
um, in our Diabetes Care Center, we map you out. We uh, make sure we understand what's going on with you before we take any action. And every action we take in our Diabetes Center at Sugar MDs is uh, definitely specific to you, specific to your desires, specific to your social, uh, specific to your financial situation. Uh, so we draft a plan that can get you to success. So let's move on for the next side effect. But blurry vision is uh, definitely a common complaint as well. Uh, one of the mechanisms that causes blurry vision is the lens. The, the lens in front of your eye that, uh, that, uh, that you can actually focus on with your eye um, basically uh, retains water and the thickness of the lens changes based on your blood sugar. So if you have too much blood sugar, your lens will get thicker because it's going to attract all the sugar and the sugar attracts the water as we discussed and suddenly your lens will become thicker. And, that, that, and then it can turn into thinner as well as the blood sugar fluctuator or goes down. So that can definitely cause blurry vision. Blurry vision tends to happen most of the time with high blood sugars. Or when you correct the high blood sugars very rapidly, that can happen as well. Another thing you have to keep in mind with um, the blurry vision is the retinopathy, which is the diabetic eye disease. So if your blurry vision is not temporary, uh, definitely visit an eye doctor. But as a, as a diabetic, you should always uh, have an eye visit, uh, eye doctor visit, as soon as you get diagnosed and then every year, unless you're very well controlled and you don't have any signs of eye disease, then you can do it every two years as well. Sometimes you will notice as well some dark velvety skin, especially around the neck or behind the neck, uh, under armpits. Uh, the creases in, uh, in those areas, you may notice more darker and softer skin, and that is a sign of insulin resistance, not necessarily a sign of diabetes, uh, but most patients with type 2 diabetes will also have that uh, uh, because of uh, the underlying, you know, uh, the reason being insulin resistance. Of course, like you guys all know, diabetic retinopathy is very common. Sometimes it can happen even before diagnosis and the symptoms would be numbness, tingling and even pain. Most of the time, numbness and tingling uh, are the most common symptoms. Uh, again, you know, you may be thinking that, oh, I just got diagnosed with diabetes or I'm, I, I'm not even diagnosed with diabetes. Why am I getting this non numbness and tingling? But keep in mind that the numbness and tingling can happen uh, even before the diagnosis of diabetes. So this is something that you have to keep in mind. It can actually get worse if you bring your blood sugars from, let's say, 400 down to 100 within a week or two. Uh, although a lot of symptoms will get better, but sometimes uh, diabetic uh, neuropathy will get uh, worse just temporarily. Again, changing or the shift in the blood sugars will change the amount of fluid in your body and then the changes in the volume of fluid in your body will change the caliber of the arteries and they can lead to a temporary reduction in the blood supply to your tissues uh, which uh, definitely will, um, uh, be, uh, will be felt by the nerves and since nerves are the nerves, they, 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 may, they will make you feel. That's it. But uh, most, most of the time, it's temporary. Um, uh, it can be treated symptomatically or not, but uh, if it is a, just because of the improvement, rapid improvement in blood sugars, it tends to improve rapidly. Of course, when you have diabetic retinop, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, neuropathy, uh, numbs and tingling uh, may not be the only symptom. So I always recommend my patients, just do not rely on your doctor checking your feet every six months or every year because your doctor may check your feet today and two days later, you may develop a diabetic foot ulcer. Now, why it is so fast and why it is so common? Just because most type two diabetics, especially after a certain time, their diabetic neuropathy get worse and they stop feeling that uh, pain that would otherwise happen with a poke or with anything that outside um, intruder to the skin should be felt as a pain, right? But in patients with diabetes, uh, neuropathy especially, they will not feel that. And the problem is 
uh, if you are not checking the bottom of your feet at least every other day, you may notice a big hole at the bottom of your feet. And I'm not kidding. It happens all the time. My patients will come to me and they will say, one day I just looked at the bottom of my feet and I have seen a big hole and I don't know where it came from. It can happen very quickly. Uh, so you really have to pay attention to the bottom of your feet. If you cannot see the bottom of your feet, use a mirror or have somebody check for you. Do not just wait or rely on your doctor to check. Just be your own doctor in that regard and keep checking your uh, bottom of your feet. And if you see something, say something. Do not just ignore or wait for it to get worse because remember, your, your immune system is down due to diabetes. Your vascular system is not uh, strong. So if a damage happens in normal individuals, uh, that will heal very quickly, right? So that's another symptom or sign of diabetes. Uh, basically, uh, the, the, the delayed uh, healing of the wounds. So that is, again, because the immune system is down, cannot defend against infections. So infections are finding the playground. And when there is an infection, uh, that can come from outside very easily, right? Because we, our whole skin is actually covered with bacteria. It's just that the skin is a barrier that's not letting the bacteria in. But when there is a breach in that safety system, uh, then the bacteria will rush in. And if your immune system is down, what do you expect, right? So it's like opening your borders to the enemy and not having an army is not a good idea. So that's why the infection will develop and the inf as infection uh, kicks in, uh, the, the immune system that is already weak will create a lot of casualties. So that is going to lead to pus and drainage and tissue damage. And as tissue damage progress, if it is not contained and controlled, it can lead to gangrene. That's how people lose their toes. That's how people lose part of their foot or the entire foot sometimes up to the knee can be lost if it is not intervened properly. Sometimes the infection goes all the way to the bone and that is the real bad scenario where you don't want to be in. So again, we are back to the uh, diabetic signs and symptoms. Important, if you have numbness or tingling, you have to be your own police and you have to make sure that you are checking the bottom of your feet and you're not letting a wound happen to you. And if you see something, you say something. Okay, so this is for guys. Erectile dysfunction is very, very common. Now, what happens is, again, I'm not gonna go into detail here about how an erection happens, but basically it happens because of the blood flow rushing to the penis. For that, you need arteries. When you have diabetes, as we discussed, the the arterial system is weak, the blood flow is weak, so as a result, you're not going to have a good erection. Now, we generally give drugs like Viagra or stuff like that that can help the blood flow increase, and that helps with um, the, um, the, the blood flow, but uh, that is generally um, a, a non-reversible condition, unfortunately, and um, there are different ways to deal with it, but that is one of the symptoms that can actually happen very early. Unfortunately, heart disease or erectile dysfunction can even happen before diabetes diagnosis as, a, um, uh, as an early sign. So if you have that problem, you also need to pay attention and report to your doctor and get checked for diabetes as well. Now, it's not uncommon for people to present to the hospital with chest pain or heart attack or stroke and get diagnosed with diabetes. Again, I cannot tell you this enough, but it is uh, very common for a cardiovascular disease to happen uh, to diabetics or even before diabetes happen. The primary reason for cardiovascular disease, chest pain uh, can be a sign of it or symptom of it, of an early diabetes or pre-diabetes, but you may have a heart attack at, at a pre-diabetes stage. So your A1C, your A1C may be 5.7 or you know 6%. You may say, oh, I'm okay, I'm not diabetic, I still have time, but you actually don't. That means that you're actually having a vascular disease already uh, and you may present with a heart attack at even the initial uh, stages of diabetes. 
we have to discuss about weight loss as well. Now, weight loss typically happens very rapidly in type 1 diabetic patients as a um, sign of diabetes. Um, but definitely, it can happen to patients with type 2 as the early symptom of type 2 diabetes. Now, uh, why this happens is it's, it's the same reason for both type 1 and type 2. Obviously, all you know uh, that the type 1 diabetes is a total deficiency of insulin. But type 2 diabetics can be also temporarily or permanently insulin deficient or insulin dependent as well. So, as I said, when you get diagnosed uh, at the initial stages, if your blood sugars are really, really high, that actually uh, stops your pancreas uh, working. The way your pancreas works, it, is, uh, it, it senses the blood sugar difference, right? So your, your pancreas doesn't know how high your blood sugar is in, in numeric numbers. It just can't understand the difference. But typically, it can understand this, the small changes in your blood sugars, let's say going from 90 to, to 120, and it's gonna immediately secrete insulin to kind of control that. But if your blood sugars are in the 300s, 400s, your pancreas will be like, uh, I don't know what's going on here. Like, I, I, I don't even, I, I don't even understand uh, what is the difference between 300 and 400. So, so it, it becomes basically um, uh, totally disabled. So at that point, you may lose weight. Not that your body is totally disabled from making insulin permanently, but temporarily it could be the case. So in those cases, um, we take measures to uh, make your body recover from the situation and have you uh, start making the insulin again. And that's our job at SugarMDs. If you're newly diagnosed or you have been struggling with diabetes for a long time, our job to get you under control as soon as possible and keep you under control. And um, you wanna call this cure or you wanna call this remission, whatever you wanna call it, but we can definitely help you with that and that way you don't have to worry about diabetes affecting your entire life. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I am really hopeful that now you have a better understanding. We are going to talk actually specifically about diabetic retinopathy. We're gonna talk about specifically about diabetic neuropathy. We will talk about the incontinence issues that can happen. We will talk about erectile dysfunction associated with diabetes and how to treat and how to approach these. These are going to take more time and uh, separate videos, uh, but stay tuned, uh, stay subscribed, and uh, turn on your notifications so we can always uh, stay with you and you can um, continue to watch and not miss a video. The best diabetic is the most knowledgeable diabetic. Remember that. So guys, remember, if you have diabetes, you don't have to have the burden of diabetes. So all you have to do is to have our meter and blood pressure, whatever you need, and your measurements automatically comes to us. So as a result, we can actually evaluate you before you even ask for evaluation. So we can stay on top of everything and we make sure that your numbers are under control, your overall health is under control, not just your blood sugar numbers, because your overall health is not just your blood sugar numbers, but regardless, we will be your best friend in your journey. Just go to sugarmds.com and learn more about us. I hope that information is helpful. We'll see you in the next video. Please remember to subscribe, give a thumbs up, and then make sure you turn the notification bell and check on our channel frequently.